And welcome to our discussion of trigono trigonometric functions. Uh, today we're going to examine the graph of y equals a to the sine of x. So what we have up here, um, as you can see, is a uh, equation, and we should um, indicate it right there. That's y equals a to the sine of x. Um, we are at first saying a is equal to 1, and we have this nice little slider over here that uh, allow us to change the values of a. And over here on the right side, we have our graph for the sine of x. So let's remember how the y equals sine of x looks. Uh, as you can see on the right side, um, it's, uh, it goes from maximum of 1 up here. right there, and it goes down to a minimum of negative 1 over here, and of course it's at a maximum of 1 at pi over 2, comes down to pi and then it's 0, then the sine of 3 pi over 2 or, uh, is at negative 1, and then it comes back up to 2 pi, and the sine of it is 0 again. And that's when y equals uh, the sine of x. So what we're going to examine is what happens to the sine function when we change the value of a. So watch very carefully. I'm going to move our little slider. And you notice as I move the slider over, it's going to affect the graph. I'm going to change a equal to a equal 2. And you might notice there's a difference. Uh, the difference now is the graph now goes to a maximum point of uh, 2. And let me indicate that over here. So there's the maximum point of 2 at pi over 2. And then it goes down uh, all the way down to negative 2 uh, at uh, 3 pi over 2. So notice what has happened to the graph. Instead of the maximum point being at 1 and the minimum point being at negative 1, now the maximum point is at 2 and the minimum point is at negative 2. Let's do this one more time. So if we move the slider over to 3, Notice what's happened once again. The graph, in a sense, is getting stretched. So now it's going up to a maximum point up here at 3 and a minimum point at negative 3. Once again, it went up to 3 at pi over 2 and at negative 3 at 3 pi over 2. And you notice that's happening every single pi, uh, pi intervals. So at negative pi over 2 and then negative 3 pi over 2, it's going up to its maximum point and then its minimum point and its maximum point and minimum point. But notice the maximum and minimum point are corresponding to the value of a. And of course, if I were to go to 4 and so on, so we continue moving, you'll notice what happens is as a gets larger, the graph will get larger. Of course, we're even going off the graph now. Now as it gets smaller, you can certainly see what's happening as well. As the a, if a changes to about a half, uh, or at one, if it changes to about a half, it will, uh, the value of uh, the graph will go down to a maximum minimum point of a half. And if I go to zero, well, the whole function, of course, becomes zero. As you can see, it's just flat lines. So let's see what we've just learned. So what I have here is I've captured the graphs graphs of y equals uh, sine x, which we have over here, y equals sine x. And then if you remember, we had y equals 2 sine x over here, 2 sine x. Let's fix that up. y equals 2 the sine of x. And down here, as you can see, we had y equals 3, the sine x. And if you remember, in each case, we talked about the minimum and maximum values. Um, and you might remember a term for that, and that is called the amplitude. So let's review what am we mean by the amplitude of a function. The amplitude of a function... Uh, of a graph of a trigonometric function can be found by taking the distance between the highest and lowest point and dividing by 2. So you might remember that the amplitude of our first graph, the maximum point is 1, 
and that's up here. The minimum point is negative 1, and that's down here. And if we find the difference of the highest and the lowest max and min divided by 2, we get 1 minus a negative 1 over 2, and that becomes uh, 2 over 2 or 1. So in this case, the amplitude is equal to 1. And that notice that corresponds with our value of a, which in this case was y equals 1 the sine of x. Let's put a little 1 in there, so remember that's the value of a. In our second one, the, this is y equals 2 sine x. Notice that the maximum point was at 2, so we could write maximum equals 2. Notice the minimum point is equal to negative 2, and the amplitude is simply 2 minus negative 2 over 2, which is 4 over 2, or 2. Notice that the amplitude is equal to 2. And let's go down to the last one. In this case, the maximum point was 3. And the minimum point was negative 3. So max equals 3. The min equals negative 3, and the amplitude is equal to 3 minus negative 3 over 2, which is 6 over 2, which is 3. So the amplitude in this case was 3. So let's write that down here. The amplitude is equal to 3. And you'll notice in each case, when the amplitude is 1, the value of A was 1. When the value of A was 2, the amplitude was 2. And when the value of A was 3, the amplitude is 3. So we could come to the conclusion that whatever the value of A is, is equal to the amplitude of the function. So now we could uh, conclude that in the graph of Y equals A, the sine of X, the value of A corresponds to the amplitude of the function. But you know, there's one thing we haven't investigated. What happens if the value of A is between 0 and 1? Why don't we check that out? And we actually did do that before when we checked out a half. Right now I have A equals 0.57. And although it's a little difficult to see, the amplitude is um, right there. And the, and the minimum point is, the maximum point is there and there. And if you were to subtract the maximum point minus the minimum point divided by 2, you would find that it's at 0.57. Actually, this distance here is actually 0.57, and so is that distance. So that would work. And the other thing that you should realize is that what we're really doing as we're increasing the value of A, so let's try that. As we increase the value of A, we are stretching the graph. So as the amplitude increases, the graph is being stretched in the vertical direction. And now, of course, the opposite is tr uh, true as well. As the amplitude, amplitude decreases, we are shrinking the graph um, in the y direction. So uh, as we said, as the value of a and y equals a the sine of x increases, the graph stretches in the vertical, vertical direction. And as the value of a decreases, the graph shrinks in the vertical direction. Okay, so now it's your turn. Here's two graphs. We'd like you to find the equation of each of the graphs below. Good luck, and see you again next time.